Welcome, everybody, to the Basketball Sessions podcast, a podcast where we talk about what's happening in the NBA and basketball around the world. Coming up on the pilot episode, we'll talk about the NBA Conference Finals, both the East and the West. And I also have an NBA Finals preview for you between the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat. And then we'll get into the Basketball News Roundup segment, where we talk about the different latest updates and news around the basketball world. So sit back, relax, because basketball is in session. Welcome to the Basketball Sessions Podcast. Hello, everybody. My name is Klein. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of the pod. I appreciate everyone who followed, liked, shared, and subscribed to the show. And if you haven't, uh, you still can. Um, You just need to go to the YouTube channel. That's the Basketball Sessions Podcast. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we release a new episode or whenever we come out with a new episode. Uh, And that is going to be most likely weekly, of course. I'm going to try to do that. Now, you can also like and follow the page at www.facebook.com slash basketball sessions pod. And you can share the show to all of your friends and family. Uh, We have a jam-packed episode for you today, and uh, of course, it is very special as this is the pilot episode or the very first episode of the pod. So now we'll begin it, and we'll begin with our NBA report. Here we go. Starting off with the Western Conference Finals, where the Denver Nuggets sweeps the Los Angeles Lakers to advance to their very first NBA Finals. And it was the two-man game of Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray who led the Denver Nuggets uh, to win that uh, Western Conference uh, crown finally. Uh, for the franchise who's going to uh, go to their NBA or their very first NBA uh, finals, as mentioned. Nikola Jokic averaging uh, in the conference finals a triple-double average. Uh, Such a a huge and uh, big accomplishment for him, uh, winning that uh, MVP as well. Averaging 27.8 points, 14 rebounds, and 11 assist on a 50% field goal shooting, 47% from the three, and a decent 77 free throw percentage for him. And then his partner, Jamal Murray, uh, for the conference finals, averaged 32.5 points per game, six rebounds, and five assists. And again, this is on a 50-40-90 split. That's 50% or 52% to be a field goal percentage. 40% from the three-point line, which actually whipped because in game four, he had a zero on his uh, three-point attempts. He never made one, so that dipped his average uh, to 40%, but still a decent uh, clip uh, from the three. And then he's got 95% uh, free throw percentage average for the conference finals. So uh, those two uh, were the uh, leaders uh, that swept the Los Angeles Lakers out duels the uh, partnership or the tandem of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, uh, who fared fared well as well. Um, LeBron James, for a 38-year-older, uh, almost averaged a triple double himself uh, by going 27 points, uh, and then that's 27 points, nine rebounds per game, and 10 assists. So. Oh, 
come to think of it, almost a triple-double as well for LeBron James. And then Anthony Davis, for his share, also averaged 26.8 points and 14 rebounds. Not too bad uh, for a partner um, for him. But again, Denver outduels those two with Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray leading the way. It wasn't a... Uh, pretty convincing uh you can't say that uh, it wasn't a blowout uh, wins for denver it's not really uh big wins for them it's pretty much a close games for uh the series um game one denver only won by six game two they won by five game three they won by that's nine sorry that's 11 that was the most that they won and in game four they only won by two so game three was the one that's uh, pretty much convincingly won by the nuggets that's at their home of course oh sorry that's at la uh, that they won that game three but still it's not going to come out uh, where in even though it's a close game or even though it's a close um, matchup, still a 4-0 sweep. Uh, the Lakers still didn't win a game uh, out of that. And it is not just because of the two uh, players that I mentioned that led the way for Denver. It was due to the fact that their role players were also uh, a big factor in this series. Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., KCP or Kentavious Caldwell Pope, and then Bruce Brown. Um, these four guys uh, also average uh, double dig digits for the conference finals and basically contributing in every way that they can. And that actually. Um, also is a big factor because with the lakers they only had two other help for lebron and ad austin reeves averaging 21.3 points per game so he earned himself a contract basically for next year a big contract and then the other guy that they put on Jokic as well to at least try to slow him down a bit Ruby Hachimura averaging 15 points per game and as I've heard from other podcasts as well um, and this one was from Gilbert Renes he said that after the series ended LeBron James uh, did mention that uh, and I'll get into that a little bit later with regards to what LeBron mentioned uh, after the game that he's has a lot of thinking to do with regards to basketball uh, Ruben Arenas had a great great take there that he said everybody um, can go except for Austin Reeves and Ruby Hachimura those two guys uh, LeBron would keep but all the others they could go and uh, they'd be replaced even Anthony Davis uh, that's that's big uh, for Gabriel Arenas but what I think is that yeah I think Anthony Davis uh, played big in that playoff series in the whole postseason but in the regular season Anthony Davis is just really a glass made out of glass uh, he gets injured and that practically just it it uh, has some flaws into it. it it i mean it matters when you play games so i think lebron wants someone who can or who he can rely on basically um, that, that would play whenever LeBron's because he's up in there I mean his age is up there he's getting old and again father time never gets beaten he, he always wins so I think LeBron James for all of his 
routine in the off season on how much he spends just to keep his body in tip top shape for the next or the following seasons again father time's never been defeated it's always going to come up to that and he's right up there in age he's almost 39 uh the next season he's gonna turn 39 so we never know we never know uh when what's gonna happen but again the going back to what i was saying lebron um made clear that i think the the only two guys that uh, uh, can he can rely on basically was austin reeves and ruby hachimura and Rui at Hachimura came in in the middle of the season after the trades. Going back to Denver, though, um, those four guys that I mentioned, um, Michael Porter Jr., Davis Caldwell, Pope, Aaron Gordon, and Ruth Brown were the contributors. They added uh, basically more firepower to what is already a uh, pretty hot combination uh, those two the two-man game of Jokic and Murray and of course uh, Nikola Jokic for averaging a triple double in the conference finals and lifting or carrying the Denver Nuggets one uh, the Magic Johnson Western Conference Finals MVP award that uh, was introduced and uh, he was given that award right after game four of the western conference finals and again after that uh, as mentioned earlier i was going to talk about what lebron mentioned after the game he was interviewed and he said that he has a lot of things to think about um, when it comes to the game of basketball so we're going to talk about a little bit of that um, with LeBron's future. And yeah, that was what he said. Um, it was, uh, they tried to clear it up. ESPN tried to clear it up on what he meant on that uh, or what he meant by that. So he's, he continued on by mentioning he has a lot of things to think about when it comes to basketball for next season. And what I think is that LeBron's legacy, it's, it's already set. As we all know, LeBron, uh, he doesn't have to prove anything to people as his, his legacy is set already. One of the best, uh, I think, LeBron is one of the best for me. Top three, of course. I can't just say he's top one. Michael Jordan is still top one for me. And then Kobe, Kobe Bryant is up there as well. So that's a debate, Kobe and LeBron. Um, but yeah, I mean, if LeBron decides to hang it up, hang up his sneakers, call it a day, end his uh, successful career there, then... I think um, it's all good. I mean, it's all right. Um, that'd be one hell of a career uh, for LeBron James. And now, a lot of media um, that I've watched after that interview with LeBron, a lot of the media think that what LeBron said would be uh, there, that this is their opinion that it could be just a play. I mean, pressure the management or the Lakers management to basically improve the roster. This is what Gilbert was trying to say that uh, it could be one of the things that LeBron used to make sure that the Lakers organization is uh, going to try to definitely improve on the roster next year and can't just i mean for the past couple of seasons this is what the lakers management has been doing like plugging in bits and pieces from different teams and it's 
basically just because of Anthony Davis and Bron James's contract, they can't do anything with those two or with those two under contract already. And that's a pretty huge uh, contract for those two. And it was a miracle that Rob Linka was able to pull off uh, what he did uh, this midseason with the players that he was able to pick up uh, before the trade deadline. Again, Hachimura was one of them. And then they got um, Russell back. They got D'Angelo Russell back. Um, Leek Beasley. And then Vanderbilt was also added. Uh, and that's basically out of just a big Russell Westbrook contract. They were able to pull that off. So that's a big shout out to Rob Belenka for being able to do that. Pretty much a miracle. But again, yeah, going back, I, go, I get sidetracked with that. But yeah, that's one of the theories that uh, Braun's just trying to say that so that the management gets pressured to improve the roster. And then there's also uh, one theory that LeBron might just retire so that when his son, Bronny James, enters the league, that he wouldn't have that added pressure of being under the shadow of his father, of his dad, LeBron James, of course. But then there's also another theory that of course, LeBron still wants to play with his son, so we don't know what's going to happen with that. So if you think that LeBron's doing that, I mean, give me your take. What do you think um, about that uh, comment by LeBron? And what do you think, what do you guys think that um, he's going to be doing? Is he done with basketball? Give me your thoughts on this uh, comment on the page and on the channel so that I can know what you guys think about that. Anyways, moving on, we got the Eastern Conference Finals as uh, Game 7. It went to Game 7 with that particular series. Miami Heat defeats the Boston Celtics in Game 7 in Boston. To win it all for the Miami Heat and of course that was due to the fact that Jimmy Butler came back to the series you know for the whole playoff series I mean uh, Jimmy Butler's performance was pretty exceptional I mean at the beginning of the series it looked like that he was or at the beginning of the playoffs i mean it seemed that jimmy butler was really at the, the top of his game he was on the peak of his powers and it seemed like he was on another level on another level i mean that nobody can touch him i mean jimmy butler sure was uh, floating around as his nickname and yeah uh, I mean Jimmy Butler showed us the stuff when he got injured in the Milwaukee series although he still came back did his thing and even in the at the start of that Eastern Conference final series games one and two those were Jimmy Butler games classic Jimmy Butler games showed up for those two conference games or conference finals games between the Boston Celtics and that was at Boston as well that uh, Jimmy Butler exploded for the first two games of those series uh, and he ended up averaging for the conference finals 24 points per game seven rebounds and six assists or six assists excuse me uh on a 42 percent field goal shooting clip 34 percent from the three well decent and 
83% uh, from the free throw line. Now, it kind of looked like Jimmy um, after game two, he practically slowed down a bit uh, for his game. And he had much of his teammates. I mean, he relied on his teammates for much of game three. That was the Gabe Vincent game, uh, that game three. Uh, of the conference finals and then after that we all know what happened game four five and six boston came alive in that series and won those games but in game seven jimmy butler took that game again he came back and he came live ending the series um, for the Miami Heat, helping them advance to another uh, finals appearance. Uh, in four years, they've had two finals or NBA finals appearance, almost three if you count last year, if his shot went in. And then, you know, I mean, he is just lifting or showing that heat culture that has always been said of the Miami Heat. Speaking of which, that particular series though, um, it was really a battle of the supporting casts, both of the teams. We got Miami, Shout out to Caleb Martin, uh, definitely uh, even battling Jimmy for the finals MVP award. Um, Caleb Martin got four votes, votes, I mean. Jimmy got the five, so out of the nine. So he got the nod and he won the Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Uh, but as classic Jimmy, he said that uh, when when there was a moment uh, on the awarding ceremonies where Bam tried to hand the trophy or the throw the trophy, I mean, <laughs> to Jimmy Butler, and Jimmy said he doesn't want to hold it; he wants to hold the next one, meaning he wants to win the title, and that's the one that he's gonna hold up instead of that and from the interview of Malika Andrews and ESPN uh, with Jimmy Butler after the series or just today uh, he said that his finals MVP or the Eastern Conference finals MVP handed over to his dad he gave it to his dad and he's not interested with that one and uh, that's what Jimmy said he's not interested with anything but the championship he plays for the championship all stars, all NBAs. Needless to say, he just wants to win the Larry O'Brien trophy, as he mentioned. And that's what he said. So, um, going back, I mean, I was talking about the uh, Miami Heat's supporting cast uh, Caleb Martin, uh, Gabe Vincent. Again, Gabe Vincent had game three. That's what that was his game. Uh, he finished with 29 points, I think led Miami uh, in that game and then you have Max Struess and Duncan Robinson the two wing guys that they had and these are all all these four guys uh, well I don't think Caleb Martin was drafted I'm not sure but these are what heat culture uh, basically means or what heat culture basically shows that these four guys lesser known guys that you know just plays hard and plays to their ability and shows up in these conference finals max Struess was uh, big in game two and game three and then you got duncan robinson starting to heat up games four five and six and plus the fact that gabe vincent didn't play in game six as well he got injured in game five. Those were factors. Now, 
going to the other side or um with boston side the, their supporting cast as well was pretty good i mean not missing boston celtics supporting cast they got Derek white marcus smart rob williams and al horford to name four guys they also have grant williams in there that uh, stack up the problem is though one of the guys that i was expecting to produce for boston's supporting cast was malcolm brogdon the nba six man wardy he got injured his hand was injured he wasn't able to play that much um, i didn't think he played in game seven i'm not sure if he did um, but you know it it that also spelled or that basically was one of the things that lifted Miami over Boston uh, in game seven um, yeah Malcolm Brogdon did play in game seven and he got goose eggs all over his stat line and that's because he was injured I mean player was injured so you don't expect anything from him then but yeah the bench was it and plus the fact that performances in in game seven it really really depends on your stars you know every uh, games that are pressure packed you really would rely on your stars and speaking of which uh for boston jason tatum and jalen brown the two jays their performances uh in this playoffs particularly in the series it's specifically for jason tatum his performance has been up and down uh this postseason but uh, at the end of the series or at elimination games Chase and Tatum uh, would always show up and uh, he, he would show up all the freaking time uh, as he showed in the Philadelphia series that they played game seven of that as well 51 points scored uh, by Tatum now in game seven uh, of the Eastern Conference Finals though that's the thing that's a problem because um, the very first play hey, uh, very first play of the game he got injured he sprained his ankle real bad and he was hurting it showed there were clips that showed him grimacing in pain when dribbling when running on and off the court it was showing that bad or it was really that bad and that spelled the doom for the Celtics as what JJ Reddick was saying on his podcast, which I also listened to. These types of games are played. It has to be your stars. They're the ones who has to set the tempo. They're the ones who has to set the game. And when they come out flat in the beginning or at the beginning of the game, definitely it affects the team and that's what happened to the Boston Celtics um, it looked like that the Celtics team got the or got their air sucked right out of them uh, it, it looked like that they were all tired it showed that they were lackadaisical with their uh, plays and they just kept shooting and shooting and again they had a pretty bad shooting day or shooting game uh, not as bad as game six though but it was horrible it was horrendous and they just kept firing that's what uh, what Chuck was saying or Charles Barkley was saying on the TNT panel that the Boston Celtic came back uh, right after game six it showed that they came back to their bad habits where they tend to just chuck threes I mean shoot threes and these are bad shots 
they were averaging better in the two-point field goal side, but they still like shoot th- shoot threes, even though they shot better in twos. And it showed again in Game Seven after they played Game Six that they where, where they had a bad shooting day or shooting game, I, I should say. Um, game Seven was pretty bad as well. It was, it was horrible. So you know they live by the three and they die by the three, and that's what happened. They kept on shooting the three even though it didn't work for them. And they trailed, trailed big in that game seven. And that spelled it for the Celtics as Miami won that particular game. So uh, the Heat advances to the NBA Finals to play the Denver Nuggets. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, get a preview to the matchup. Uh, of the Denver Nuggets against the Miami Heat for the NBA Finals. We'll go through it. And that would be the Jokic and Murray versus the Jimmy and Bam combination. Now, of course, Nikola Jokic, the two-time MVP or MVP, is always going to be a mismatch nightmare. And again, if he wants to actually dominate anybody, he can. With the size of Jokic, uh, seven foot, brings the ball down, make can make plays, sees the court widely, and he, he can actually dominate anybody or any matchup that he has. But that guy or that player is very unselfish. He's an unselfish player and he always wants to make his or to make his teammates better. And then you also have Murray, um, who again has been shooting the lights out this postseason, which makes the two man game uh, so effective and so deadly. Now, on the other side of the court, we got Jimmy, who's been playing like Hall of Famer. Again, um, with, with his play this postseason, although he did slow down a bit in the East Finals, but uh, Game 7, he showed up and he finished the series leading Miami in scoring uh, with 24.7 points per game. Now, Bam, uh, on the other hand, uh, his partner, Bam Adebayo, uh, he was pedestrian uh, with that series. Very pedestrian. Um, Averaging only 14.9 points per game, nine rebounds uh, per game is decent, of course. Uh, those numbers come to think of it. If you're a regular basketball player and playing in the NBA, 14 points, nine rebounds is pretty good. But for an all star caliber type of player like Bam Adebayo, and he is needed by the team to produce. He has to produce more. The Heat need him to be exceptional for them um, to at least low down uh, Nikola Jokic if he actually can do that. And of course, um, one of the other factors or things that we need to look out for in this finals is going to be the battle of the role players on who's going to perform better. Like I mentioned uh, earlier with the Denver Nuggets, they got the four players who are playing exceptionally well. Aaron Gordon, MPJ, KCP, Bruce Brown. They've used them up and they've been performing well. Um, But Miami's bench or Miami's role player supporting cast isn't just playing out of their mind as well they, they are not just gonna lay down and die of course it's been a cinderella run for them actually um being the eight seed uh, on the play in tournament and battling the number one seed eliminating them now they eliminate the number two seed 
to get to the final so the cinderella run is continuing for the miami heat and that is due to the fact that their bench or their role players supporting cast has been exceptional as well they've been playing out of their minds with their play as of late and another thing that you would be looking out in this final series is of course the coaching battle between Michael Malone or Mike Malone and Eric Spolstra now those two are great coaches it's going to be a great coaching matchup between those two and both of them are really great in making adjustments and of course matching up against their opponents so that would also be an interesting storyline on who would be able to make the correct and in-game adjustments against the two so kudos to them we'll wait on that we'll watch on the finals to see who's gonna win game one scheduled for tomorrow um we'll see who wins game one i think uh for me though my opinion in this particular series i'm gonna go with the denver nuggets again because if you haven't been watching or following basketball for the last couple of years or last five years or pretty much if you haven't followed basketball that much denver has been building up to this uh particular run that they have it actually started in the 2018 19 season before the bubble oh. they finished first in the regular season with the 54 and 28 uh win loss standing uh, but they lost to the semifinals or conference semifinals against the Trail Blazers, uh, three games to four, who all actually played Golden State Warriors in the West Final as well uh, after winning that. And then in the bubble, they played the Lakers as well in the conference finals. They lost four games to one, almost a sweep uh, on that one. They won one game two against they, they lost against the eventual champions that year the following year uh, they lost again to the conference semifinals uh, they got swept by the Suns uh, that year uh, they finished second in the season uh, in the regular season that year and then the year after that uh, or basically last year uh, they were also second finishing second in the regular season losing in the first round against the eventual champions the golden state warriors four games to one and that is due to the fact that jamal murray wasn't there he was rehabbing because he got injured uh that year so this year nikola Jokic um and jamal murray are back they finished the regular season um, at the top uh, of the West, finished number one in the West, and uh, they got their supporting cast uh, this year. They signed Bruce Brown, perfect fit for the team. So I think it'll be the Denver Nuggets over the Miami Heat. Uh, I think it's going to go six games four games to two uh but if you have a different opinion and i think you do of course you guys have your own uh, opinion comment down below on the youtube channel you can comment on the facebook page as well on what you think would be the finals uh on who's gonna win the nba finals this year all right so we got next up we got uh basketball news roundup coming up stick around this is the basketball sessions podcast you are still tuned in to the basketball sessions podcast and we have next up 
uh, is our basketball news roundup. Uh, in this news, again, this basketball news roundup segment, we talk about what's the latest updates, news around the basketball world. And one of them is the coaching carousel news that uh, we've held, we have so far in the NBA as a new coaching hires the Milwaukee Bucks hire Adrian Griffin as the replacement for coach Bud and for the 76ers they hire Nick Nurse as a replacement for Doc Rivers so a lot of the media personnel actually have been saying that the 76ers um, goes from a doctor or a doc to a nurse basically that's what they've been saying and then just today uh, earlier today um, Detroit Pistons agree with Monty Williams uh, to be their next head coach we'll talk about that a little bit uh, Adrian Griffin of course previously serving as the Toronto Raptors assistant coach and uh, he was hired by the Bucks allegedly following the endorsement of Giannis Antetokounmpo as per the athletic staff when I got news of that. Um, and then Nick Nurse was, high, was the head coach, of course, of the Toronto Raptors who won the 2019 NBA Finals. He won a title with them. And after a disappointing season this year, um, he was fired by the Raptors and after Doc Rivers was fired by the 76ers they hired Nick Nurse to replace him and this report earlier came in Monty Williams agreeing to a long-term contract um, uh, six years to be exact with the Detroit Pistons to be their next head coach Williams was the head coach of the Phoenix Suns this season before they got eliminated in the second round of the playoffs and he uh, I think was fired or stepped down uh, as well and we also have news uh, from the Golden State Warriors as longtime uh, general manager and president of basketball operations uh, operations there Bob Myers steps down uh, from his role at the Golden State Warriors Bob Myers spent 11 seasons um, there and won two executive of the year award four-time uh, NBA champion and one of the architects of course of that uh, Golden State run that they had recently and then of course we also have Carmelo Anthony recently retiring from the NBA Carmelo Anthony leaves the game of basketball after a uh, successful career a scoring champion 10-time all-star six-time all-NBA selection a three-time Olympic gold medalist uh, of course he's known for being Olympic mellow, stepping up in the Olympics uh, when needed. And of course, is the NBA's ninth most points scorer of all time. He ended up with 28,289 points in his career. So that's it. And that's going to be a wrap for the very first and pilot episode of the pod. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone, and uh, be sure to follow, like, share, and subscribe to the pod for more of your NBA and basketball news updates. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, everyone. Peace.